So today I'm going to share some really interesting information on kidney stones. I think it's actually groundbreaking. I've done a lot of videos on kidney stones, but I've never talked about this one thing, the thing or the trigger that originates this kidney stone in the first place. I mean, when you think about it, it's just so weird that people develop stones in their kidney. Like what's up with that? And the pain from kidney stones can be devastating. I mean, just unbearable. But this calcification thing is happening in other parts of the body too. Calcification of your joints as in arthritis. We get calcification or placking in our arteries, teeth as tartar. We even can get calcification in our eyes as in cataracts. It can even happen in the inner ear and create symptoms of ringing in the ear, tinnitus. When someone has Alzheimer's or even dementia, they found calcium deposits within the synapses of the brain. Then you get hardening of the arteries, which causes high blood pressure and even strokes. So there's a relationship with that. And even when you have gallstones, there's cholesterol there, but there's also calcium. Calcium deposits can also accumulate in the breast tissue. It can also occur with MS and even develop in your lymph nodes as in tonsil stones. So what the heck is going on with this calcium? Well, to figure this problem out, I always like to go to nature to see if there's a similar thing going on. And if we look at nature, okay, especially coral reefs, for example, that's a calcium deposit formation. Also, if you ever look at um, like hot springs, there's calcium formations going on with that. I mean, even if you look uh, deep in the soil, you'll find limestone, right? Where does that come from? Well, we'll get into that. And even in the bottom of ships, you have these huge barnacles. Those are calcium formations. And what do all these calcium formations have in common? Microbes. Microbes make these calcium formations. And when I did this deep dive into this topic, I finally found the key article that I've been looking for. There was a study on kidney stones that evaluated, I think it was 78 or 79 people. And out of those 78 or 79 people with kidney stones, they found 97.2% of them had tiny bacteria in the kidney stone. And these tiny bacteria, okay, they were very, very tiny. They're like a hundred times smaller than bacteria are called nanobacteria. Nano meaning very, very small. And by the way, um, this is a very recent discovery or finding because of our ability to view things with certain types of microscopes. In the past, we could never find these things, but deep inside these kidney stones, there are microbes and they're nanobacteria. And it just so happens that these nanobacteria eat calcium and then form bone-like crystal structures. And that is called appetite, but it's a completely different definition of when you have an appetite for food, okay? Appetite is a type of calcium phosphorus that is in bone, okay? And these nanobacteria actually make this type of calcium as an igloo type structure to help them survive against various stresses like antibiotics. Antibiotics are a drug that kills bacteria. And one of the big side effects of antibiotics is it enhanced microbial biofilms. And biofilms are these colonies of microbes with these little calcium igloo type protective shells. So every time someone takes an antibiotic, they actually make the microbes survive stronger because they adapt and they actually enhance the formation of these um, organisms. And this is why the solution is not to just take another antibiotic to kill off these microbes and make the environment very sterile because it just makes things worse. Now, some other information, if you didn't already know this, that actually will make sense is that they've also found these small microorganisms in the plaque in your teeth in the plaque in your arteries, in the calcium deposits in your joints. So where you may have thought this problem was just an excess amount of calcium, it's actually not. This is not being created because you have too much calcium in the diet. It's not being created because you are taking too many calcium supplements. It has a lot more to do with this microbe and what this microbe is doing within its environment. So if we take a deeper look at these nanobacteria, there's a couple of things that you need to know about them. They form biofilms, which are colonies that bind together with calcium shells to survive. They're very resistant against antibiotics. In fact, they get stronger when you take an antibiotic. They can grow in different pHs, in different environments, in different temperatures. 
and in different stresses. In fact, the more you stress them, uh, the more they grow. The big complication of these microbes in their shells is our own immune system has a difficult time detecting them, but they do detect there's a problem. And there's usually going to be some type of immune response that goes on for a long period of time, which means that your body, your own body's immune system creates more inflammation. And that's where you get a lot of the complications from the placking in your teeth, you know, in your gums or placking in the arteries or placking in your joints. A lot of the symptoms that you experience are coming actually from your own immune system, trying to get rid of this deeper infection. Now, as a really interesting side note, one really good remedy to help decrease these nanobacteria and decrease biofilms is citrate. Where does citrate come from? Lemons. It's the citric acid or the citrate in lemons, which is kind of a common remedy for kidney stones. Well, now we might know why, because citrates help to inhibit the formation of biofilms. Now, the mechanism of how this thing develops is very similar to how H. pylori creates ulcers. If you don't know about that connection, a lot of the ulcers that people develop come from this bacteria and it's sitting in your stomach. Now, a lot of people have H. pylori, but it's asymptomatic. There's no symptoms until your environment changes in your stomach where your pH becomes altered and maybe your diet becomes off. And then this somewhat um, neutral or somewhat friendly H. pylori shifts its relationship to become a bit unfriendly and it starts to develop problems in your stomach. And of course, the treatment that they use for this is antibiotics, which have side effects. But the point is that the great majority of the public has this microbe in their body and it's not doing anything. It's not creating problems. It's kind of a, like a neutral type response. I mean, the same thing you could say for any microorganism. When you start to take antibiotics, for example, and you create stress, now we get an overgrowth of fungus, right? Because the bacteria was there in the first place to keep the fungus or candida in check. Antibiotics only kill bacteria. They don't kill fungus or candida or yeast. So now you get rid of this one thing, which is the protective thing. Now you get this overgrowth on the other side. Candida overgrowth or thrush. There's a much higher risk of people getting these problems, like I'm talking about kidney stones, but some of these other problems too, when someone is obese, when someone is a diabetic, when they have high blood pressure, when they have kidney problems or kidney disease, and when they're immune compromised, like in HIV, or when they take a lot of prednisone. So the way that I can make sense out of this is that someone might manifest kidney stones if there's maybe a weakness within the kidney from some past injury versus another problem with these nanobacteria in your arteries, or maybe you had damage in the eye, and that's where this problem develops, or the joints. Kind of similar to cancer, where cancer tends to spread in areas of inflammation or weakness or old injury. Now, you might be thinking, well, how do we kill off this microbe? Well, first you have to deal with the shell, right? The problem with that is if you start to destroy the shell, you're going to release a lot of these microbes into the blood, into the urine, which can create more problems. And then these microbes can then become like what's called endotoxins. And the problem with that is they can create more infection in other places in the body. And this is why with like lipotripsy, where they, they blast the kidney stone, right, with this sound wave a person will have a greatly increased risk of getting infection afterwards. And this is probably why they give you an antibiotic to kill everything that has been released into the body. So when you start to use various, uh, even natural remedies to break up these calcium shells, you have to realize what you're doing. I'll give you an example with Karen, my wife. She wanted to take a remedy for biofilms, right? For her sinus problems. And so she took this very powerful remedy and it definitely worked. It broke up all sorts of things. But then as a complication, she didn't look to it. There was something seriously going on with her digestive system where she could not go to the bathroom. She had this huge knot. She couldn't eat. She felt sick. And this went on for several days until as I was researching this, I found one of the side effects when you start breaking up biofilms is this problem called cholestasis where you have this stagnant bile that is just kind of jammed up in the bile ducts. 
So apparently when you release the microbes, they can do some damage and they can even inhibit the formation of bile, which now we get this thickened stuff that gets stuck in the bile ducts and it can back up in the liver and create all sorts of problems, including constipation. So what we quickly did as a remedy, and I'm going to recommend this if you decide to use some type of biofilm, even a natural remedy, or some chelation type remedy, which is called EDTA, you're going to break up these things. I recommend before you do that, okay, uh, from personal experience, you want to take something called Tudka. Tudka is a type of bile salt that will get the bile flowing first. So when you destroy these biofilms and calcium shells, it can be released through the body, okay? So just make mental note if you decide to do that and you want to go really, really slow with any type of uh, thing that you're going to use to destroy the biofilms. I would have some activated charcoal on the side and I would take that as needed because activated charcoal can help absorb a lot of the toxic material that you are breaking up as it's coming out through the body. However, doing that requires a little more information and a lot more preparation. So I'm going to give you uh, a different approach to this, okay? That's a little more streamlined, less um, complications. And so the first thing I would highly recommend you do, which is going to help you prevent any more kidney stones, okay? It's probably the best thing you can do is to start drinking more fluid, like um, 2.5 liters every single day. That way, the stones cannot form, okay? Because the stones always form in a super concentrated urine. So if you're drinking enough fluid, they can't form. So right there, it'll probably prevent you from having any kidney stones. All right. Number two, I would start taking calcium citrate, okay, plus lemons. I would probably do two or three or four ounces of lemon a day or two or three or four lemons a day in your water. Okay. I would use that. And I would also on top of that use potassium citrate. You can find that in a lot of electrolyte powders, but the potassium citrate is a really good anti-biofilm and it can help reduce the risk of kidney stones. The next thing I would do is I would take probably one of the most powerful natural antibiotics, okay? That would be garlic. And I would take the garlic in a freeze-dried form if I can get it. However, other forms are gonna be fine, but freeze-dried garlic would be a nice natural antibiotic that is selective to those bacteria but won't create any damage to your cells. Now, what you're doing is you're taking something like an antibiotic and without any risk factor of developing antibiotic resistance because it's natural, and you're creating an environment where these microbes can't continue to exist. Optimize the environment around these microbes, okay? So over time, these biofilms and nanobacteria can go away, not just in your kidneys, but in the heart, in the eyes, in the joints, all over. Kidney stones are just the tip of the iceberg. That is the symptom of an unhealthy environment, probably because of uh, bad eating habits or whatever. So what I mean by cleaning up the environment is getting on a healthy ketogenic diet with intermittent fasting. I would recommend to build up your microbiome. There are certain microbes that can greatly help prevent these bowel films. And of course, doing whatever you can to decrease stress. And that means stress for the microbes too. So really limit uh, the times you take antibiotics or take drugs or expose yourself to chemicals that can cause these microbes to then adapt and then become stronger. Now I think it's appropriate to watch this next video, probably one of my most important videos on kidney stones right here. Check it out.